time here. Hey, Del Jackson, Ella Hoops, I got Andy at the bottom, and I got Seth Sigmund, coach from Cacalico. Um, we tried this last week, and I thought it went pretty well, and uh, Andy and I thought that maybe, you know, not listen to us anymore, but get a coach in and, and see what's going on in, uh, in Eagle country. So uh, we'll go back and forth with Seth and uh, we'll ask him a couple questions and then kind of follow it up. So I got a question like off the wall. I, I, see, I see the Cacalico gear, which is really cool, but then I see a big, big hog back there. So give us the background on, on the Arkansas hog. Uh, all right, well, I was born in Arkansas and that's where I lived for most of my childhood. Uh, my grandpa went to the University of Arkansas. My dad went to the University of Arkansas. And if we had stayed there, I would have gone to the University of Arkansas. So that's my, that's my college team in every sport. And it's been a rough decade or so. Yeah, yeah. For, for football and for basketball, yeah. Uh, yes. Pretty, yes, unfortunately. Pretty, pretty rough. But I'm, I'm old enough to remember the, uh, the Nolan days man, when, oh, they, yeah. they, when he got after it and played that's like great. crazy men. And he I, was, I was 10 and 11 when – I was 10 when they won the national championship in 94 and then 11 when they made it back to the finals and lost to UCLA in 95. So yeah, yeah, he, I remember it well. He got, he got after it. He had them cowboy boots. That, that's what mm -hmm. I remember. Them guys really – what was it, 40 minutes of hell? Is that what they called it? 40 minutes of hell, yep. Pressure yeah. the entire game. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's an old thing. Okay, so um, we did a little research and looking into your career here, and we have you for four years at, in Eagle Country, and the last two years, you had double-digit wins, and you and I kind of talked off-camera, so two years ago, you made a little run in the districts, but you didn't qualify for the leagues, and last year, you qualified for the leagues, but didn't qualify for the districts, so... Um, Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those two seasons first of all. Let's let you know get your viewpoint. It's like okay, you had to be you had to be on the edge and kind of figuring out where and wall and all all that. But uh, how did things go in those two years? Well, so two years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, we had you know we played a lot of seniors. We had a lot of guys that could shoot. We had a German exchange student Ben who was here, and he fit really well with what we tried to do, which was space the floor dribble drive, and then when help came, kick it and shoot threes. And uh, he, he fit really well into that, and our guys bought into that really well. And, and we were able to get hot at the right time. Um, we went to well, – you know, we just squeaked our way in. We had to win our last three games, three straight days, to get into districts. We made it as the 16 seed. Uh, and then – so we had to go play the one seed, Lower Dolphin. And, and they were, ended up winning the district. Uh, they were obviously very good. So we got knocked down into the consolation bracket. So we had to go to Shippensburg. And we played really well, made a lot of threes. And all of a sudden, we win that game. So then we go to New Oxford. And uh, I think we were down 16 in the first half. And Carter hit a half-court shot right at, right at uh, halftime to cut it to 13. And... In the second half, we held them to, I think it was 10 or 11 points and just stormed back. And we took our first lead with like 40 seconds to go. Brady Nunneville hit a little floater in the lane. And we ended up going down to the other end and having to get two stops because we fouled them and they missed a free throw. But then we knocked the ball out of bounds and ended with they had a shot at the buzzer that would have won, but it missed. And then we got to go play Milton Hershey in the, uh, you know, the final game of the consolation bracket there. And if we had won, we would have made states. And. Uh, we didn't do it, but it was an awesome experience. And th that group of seniors really, you know, pointed us in the right direction and showed our younger guys what it takes and, you know, kind of set the standard of where we want to be and what we want to do moving forward. So that was awesome. And then this year we had, uh, I mean, we had, we played a lot of seniors two years ago, so that left a lot of openings and we started uh, two sophomores this year in every game. I'm pretty, yeah, they started every game. And then Carter obviously was a junior this year. And, you know, we mixed some seniors in there, too. Uh, but it, it was very up and down. We, we would win a couple games, lose a couple games. Um, but just the improvement that we showed, especially our younger guys, just – I mean, it's, it's hard when you're a sophomore and you went from playing JV to now you're starting varsity. And guys are coming at you and you're not getting easy shots. And when you post up, they're pushing you. And, and, and it's a fight every possession on both ends of the floor, especially, like – People think it's it's really hard offensively, which it is, but sometimes you're exposed worse defensively as a sophomore than than on the offensive end. And um, you know, we just improved like 
Trey Rios and Augie Gerhardt. Those were two of our sophomores that started and played a, a ton for us. And they just kept getting better, kept getting better. And, and eventually we, you know, made our way into league playoffs and were able to beat Lancaster Mennonite in the opening round and had the experience of going to play Cedar Crest at Cedar Crest. And, uh, yeah, they, they smashed us pretty good, but I, I would take the experience every time because we were such a young team and just kind of lays the groundwork for, you know, what we're trying to do moving forward with some more experience for the next year. But, yeah, it was a fun year. It was a fun year. The guys, just a great group of kids. And uh, we're really excited for, you know, when we get to get back on the court, whenever that is. It, it seems it seems to me like like you, you've kind of you've kind of built things, kind of it, it's going in the right direction. So let's let's. Uh, I usually ask a coaching point of view. It's like okay, so from where you are now, or from where you were when you first started as as a head coach to where you are now as a as a head coach four years and going in the fifth year. What type of things have changed for you and your program in the last four years? That's a good question. Thank well, you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good um, I think my first couple years, you're, you're trying to set your culture and set your identity of who you want to be as a team, and as a program, and it takes some, some buy-in. And, it, and it's not that the first couple years the guys didn't buy in. That's not what it is. It just takes time to – to settle in and to get guys to understand their roles and accept their roles and, and understand what it is you're asking them to do. Because, you know, when you first start, like some of the terminology is the same, some of it's different the way you're, the way you're wanting to do things philosophy wise defensively or on the offensive end, or just the way you say things is different. So it, it's a little bit of an adjustment period, but you know, now that we're into year four and going to be year five, everybody, everybody understands what we're looking for. They, they know what we're asking them to do. And, and it's, it's buy-in and it's guys working really hard in the off season and, and trying to get better. And, you know, I think our guys have done a really good job of that. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So I, I know, um, I know Andy sees you guys a lot. He, he kind of sneaks into the gym once in a while and gets some shots up and plays yeah. against your guys once in a while. Mm -hmm. so I'm going I'm to turn it, turn it over to him because he saw you guys play a lot more than I did last year. And uh, maybe talk a little bit about last year and, and where things are going and what you see in the league. Go ahead, Andy. All right. Uh, what's up, boss? I know we normally talk a couple few times a week over text, so this is a little bit different. <laughs> um, but uh, just I basically, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on life right now because it's kind of hitting you from both angles. You got the education perspective and the the sports perspective. So with this crazy and uncertain world we're living in this time how are you making do how are you holding up i'm holding up pretty well um you know check in with the basketball guys i have them sending me videos of workout stuff right now just to just to keep them on track and show me that they're doing stuff and whether it's like lifting or shooting or dribble workouts or whatever it is just you know stay in touch and and, and keep that contact and um i think they're enjoying it too but School-wise, you know, we obviously moved to the online format, and it's it's different, but we had elements of that in place already. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, you know, it's – the kids just need to hear from you, you know, and, and just know that you're still there, even though they can't see every day and, and it's not the normal routine. But just reaching out, making sure that they understand that you're still there for them. And, you know, it, eventually this is going to end and we're going to get back to normal life. and. We just got to try to ride it out until that happens. And, and also understanding, you know, perspective wise that basketball isn't the most important thing. You know, this is, this is way bigger than basketball and, you know, it's impacting a lot of people financially and, and just health wise and things of that nature. So yeah, we, you know, I'm a basketball coach and I, I have that perspective always, but you know, it's, it's not always the most important thing. And right now it's, you know, just, just staying in tune with what's happening in society and understanding that, you know, it will, it's a tough, tough stretch right now, but it's going to get better. And when it does, we'll get back to focusing on basketball like we always do. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, obviously. Well, do you like the Cocolico swag I got on tonight? I do like that. I do like that a lot, actually. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's game attire for some of our coaches. They, they yeah. rock those jackets. But, yeah, but see, we've been over this. You know, you know, this check mark that's going to give me rats. 
And I, I it's three stripe life, baby. You know no way. Is. No way. That, that check mark means you've arrived. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So anyway, like the boss man said, getting back to last year uh, for a second, obviously it was uh, uh, a, a wild, fun year, whatever adjective you want to put on it, you know, more ways than one. But uh, Fran Fraschilla, who does games for ESPN, kind of talks about this because he was a college coach. And he says basically there's essentially five to ten games a season where you kind of overshoot your skis and play way better than what you really are. And then there's another five to ten that you play kind of well below of what you truly are. And then the meat and potatoes of that middle part is who you truly are. So on a much more abbreviated scale, what's maybe the one game where you guys put it all together and you were the truly best version of yourselves. And what's maybe that one game where you kind of look back on it now and say, geez, I don't know what that was, but I know that wasn't us. Uh, the, the best game that we played where we, I, I really didn't know what was going to happen. And we just came out and we were on fire and was Octorera at home. Mm -hmm. um, it was, we, we, I think we got up like 10, nothing to start the game. We, we played a little two, three zone, tried to make them shoot from the outside and, and they did a little bit, but they were still really aggressive to the rim. I think we took like five charges in the first half and they were in foul trouble and it just, everything kind of went our way and we were knocking down shots and we were getting to the rim and finishing. And, and then I, uh, Carter got hurt halfway through the second quarter. And I think we were up like 12 and, you know, he was our best player and all the coaches are kind of like, all right, well, here we go. Let's see. And, the rest of our guys just picked it up and we pushed it out. I think we were up 26 at one point and just, just I, I think it kind of surprised the coaches a little bit, uh, just how we were able to push it out to almost 30, you know, with our best player sitting on the bench injured. So that was definitely the game where I was like, all right, this is, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't mince any words when I told you about Octorera before that game. I, I told you, I was like, that's, that, that's, that's Chester if I've ever seen anything like it in the LL. So, yeah, that, that definitely yeah, they, dropped off. Yeah, they play different than pretty much anyone in our league. I mean, they, they press and they pressure. They're kind of like the old Arkansas teams. Like, they just right. come at you and come at you and continue to come at you. And if you're not ready for it, you're gonna, it's going to be a long night. Uh, we spent a lot of, a lot of time obviously practice before that working on some different pressure releases and, and things to, to do against that pressure. And, and I thought we executed really well. We did a good job and uh, it, it worked out in our favor that night. Um, but I, I'm not under the false assumption that they're going to forget about that when we travel down there this coming <laughs> since. <laughs> uh, I guess. And then the, man, I don't know, I guess, I guess the, game that I was most disappointed in or just seemed like we never really showed up for was uh it was our Christmas tournament and it was against Boiling Springs mm. and they had a kid who was a sophomore who just uh, we just couldn't stop him and we knew going into the game that he was their best player and you, know, you go over scouting report you're like okay we gotta make sure we're switching on the screens whenever there's a screen and get out and hedge hard and not let him get an uncontested shot and I bet in the first quarter he had like 10 points and we maybe contested one of his shots. And, and it's just, it was just one of those nights where you're just like, I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> it's just, yeah, we're just not doing what we need to do. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure some of the, some of the fans says, well, you know, who, what, what's the coach doing down there? You know, can Why aren't they guarding that guy? Yeah. Out there or what? <laughs> yep. It was just one of those nights and, and and it happens, you know, it ha and we did battle back. We had the lead in the, I think, early in the fourth, maybe. But we just, it, we just never really sustained it. And we, we did not deserve to win at all. And we didn't. So it was just, it was just a bad night. Hey, so, hey uh, I'm sorry, Andy. We, we, put up, we put up one of the games that you covered um, on our website. We're doing some replays today. So why, why don't you get into that a little bit? Because I, I reread it today, and it, it sounded like an awesome game. Uh, well, let me, let me hand it over to the CEO. We're talking about the central game with, uh, Carter's bucket at the, at the end. What, uh, I'm sure that one, uh, quickly made up for the boiling spring game. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. That, that was a good one. That was a big one for us. Um, you know, in the first half we played pretty well. I think we were up 10 at halftime playing, playing pretty well. And then in the third quarter, 
couldn't buy a bucket. They went on a run, and all of a sudden it's a tie game. And then I, I think it was right at the end of the third, uh, Novak hit that three. We were up one, and he had a three to put us down two, heading to the fourth. And it was just a bloodbath after that for the full fourth quarter. It was just – it was just back and forth and we'd go three possessions without scoring and then they'd go three possessions without scoring and someone would make a layup and then the other team would make a layup. And it was, it was basically exactly what you would expect from a Kukalko Mannheim central game. It was exactly what you would expect. Just scrappy dog fight. Who called the first time out? <laughs> uh, I believe Charlie, Charlie got the first one in there. Um, like I said, we played well in the first half. So I think we started off, I think it was four, nothing. We got two buckets, and then he he, he had enough. He had had enough. Yep. Did, he, did did Charlie have any left at the end of the game? Ah, uh, that's a. He had one left when Carter made the basket with like okay. one that's second left. So he had one left at that yeah. point. I don't know if he had any more. I'm okay. not sure. All right. <laughs> he <laughs> saved that, one. That, that, that was, was it. Was good. That was a good good move on his part to have one at that moment because that oh, saved. Man. You know, otherwise the buzzer goes and. Time runs out and it's over. They they at least still had an inbounds play to try to make something happen. <laughs> so kind of piggybacking on that, they're in your section. They're bringing whatever – some stu- stupid number, like 17 back or whatever I said last week throughout their JV and varsity group. And you guys are bringing a lot back. And I said last week, for sure, one of the top five kids in the league, maybe top three-ish, you know, seeing how this all shakes out not a lot of people still know about him obviously talking about Carter but uh, section three is going to be maybe you and MC again I mean just you know I, it's a generic question we ask everybody but the neighborhood you reside in what do you think that looks like for 2020-2021 yeah I mean Central brings back a lot that's for sure um, and they just play so hard and they're just they, – they do what they do really well. They try to make you come out and guard way out beyond where you want to, where you're comfortable doing it. And then when you do, they try to drive you hard. And then if you help, they kick it to the corner. And if you don't, they try to get the layup. And they're just really good at that. Uh, and they got – I mean, they got some guys that are coming back that are really good. Eberly's really good. Groob obviously was a freshman this year, and I think he was top – made in threes or three pointers made in the maybe was he in the league I know in the section he was number one but I mean he was really good shooter and then the kid on their team that I really like is Novak I mean that kid everything runs through him he may not score 25 but he's he's just really good ball handler really good defender and just just really cool with the ball and and just seems like he's always under control and and running the show and yeah, they're they're going to be really tough. There's no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, we have a lot coming back too. I don't I don't think we're going to shy away from anybody. But it, it's so hard to say. I mean, it, it's really hard to just discount LS after the right. rounds they've put on everyone. Or I guess, well, since I've been the varsity coach, we've only beat them once. So it's I mean, they're just they're good every year. And yeah, they lost beers and they lost Landis and Smoker. And uh, Rock and Sock, their other big guy, but we we know we know what their junior highs and JV teams are like. They're they're not going to be hurting for guys that they can put out on the floor. So it's it's going to be crazy. And and you know that's not even getting into Garden Spot or Solanco either because Garden Spot they they had a tough draw last year with their point guard Sharp going down. He got injured, and that obviously impacts everything. Zentner had to carry the load a lot more than you know, they wanted him to, and you're trying to adjust on the fly, and that's really hard to do. And then with Solanco, those guys, Coach Long, had, I mean, they play really hard. They're, they play really, really hard. So, you know, from year one to year two, you're, you're expecting to see a little jump. So who knows? I, I would hate to have to actually predict it, but I, I certainly think we should be in the mix, and I hope we're in the mix. If, if we're not, then, then I think we've done something horribly wrong. But – that's you, you know you just never know you never know what everybody's probably one injury away from, from scrapping really hard you know so I, I don't know but yeah I, I expect us to be in in the conversation and in contention late in the season that's for sure let me ask you this real quick too um obviously we we touched on it 
why we're all doing this on Zoom because we can't talk to each other, we can't be out, we can't do normal stuff. So let's assume we have a very abbreviated summer or no summer league at all. Everybody's gonna be behind the eight ball in some way, shape or form. It's just gonna happen. So, I mean, all things being equal, is this maybe the best possible scenario you could be in given what is currently going down right now on the outside world where, you know, you're not a new coach. You don't have to put in a new scheme. You're not, you didn't graduate 18 million people and you need to overhaul the, the roles and all that stuff. I mean, what, I mean, how does that figure into your equation? Like I said, we're all going to be somewhat behind the eight ball here. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it could always be worse, you know? Right. So I, yeah, not being a new coach is a huge advantage in this situation. Just kind of knowing regardless of if we get summer in or not, just knowing what to expect in the fall and what we're going to, who we're going to have and, and what we're going to try to accomplish. And yeah, we're not, not having to put in a new system and, and try to develop and, you know, institute a new culture and stuff like that. Like it, it definitely helps. And I mean, everyone is, is, pretty much in the same boat as far as missing stuff. So like, you don't feel like you're losing time like, when compared to other teams. You're definitely losing time with what you want to be doing. But everybody, it's the same for everybody. It's not like two teams are able to be having workouts and open gyms and stuff right now. Like Everybody's in the same boat. So it's, it gives you peace in a sense that you know, everyone, everyone's doing the same thing, which is not much as a team at least. Right. And it, you basically kind of stole my thunder with that. I, I'm thinking of like, obviously with fall and football and, you know, you and I are college football, you know, diehards. Well, some of us, well, we both have interesting choices on who we support, but <laughs> we'll at that. But I'm just talking. Both you guys like, got blue even, on too. I mean, what the heck? Both of you got blue on. I know. But basically what I was driving at is you're right. Like nobody, everybody's starting at square one, but like even with football, it's like, you kind of have to assume the product is going to be kind of bad because, you know, quarterbacks can't work out with receivers and lines can't do scheme protection and tandem and unison. So I just kind of meant that you're right. You can't polish up on your skills, but it, you know, that's kind of what I was getting at. So um, what else was I going to ask? Um, well, I got a couple more boss, man. Do you have anything for him? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll come back to you. We'll, we'll let you organize your thoughts here a little bit. Um, and I, and I know, Seth, you and I talk, um, give, us, give us an idea of your typical day. As, uh, you know, you told us you're a teacher at Cacalico, so tell us kind of what the school's doing and then how you balance between being a teacher and being on the computer and doing what you got to do at home as well, you know, as, as being a husband and a parent. Right. So depending on the day, just an average day, you know, when, when you get up, obviously the, the, the kids, my own kids are the first thing that has to be taken care of, you know. How old? I had, well, they both actually had birthdays during this stay at home order. So my daughter just turned five and my son just turned three. So oh, nice. they're, they're very little. And to them, it's, it's mom and dad are home because my wife's a teacher too. So they're just okay. mom and dad are home and it's like an extended summer and it's all, all fun to them. All so they don't, really, they don't really yeah. get what's going on too much. Um, it hits home with them a little bit when, you know, grandparents couldn't come to the birthday party and stuff like that. Cause you know, they're, you know, just the situation that we're in, but that's for them, it's not that big of a deal, but for my actual school kids in my classroom, you know, it's, we put the online assignments out. We don't have to actually video conference with them live. So we put the assignments out for the week and there's all sorts of links and stuff that they have to go to, to complete the tasks. And then we can check in with them. You know, some of the assignments we have them set up so that it, it sends us a report of, you know, if, if it was an assessment or something like that, where it tells us what questions they got right, what questions they got wrong, where trouble areas might be. So then we can check in with them individually if we need to, or we can message like the whole group, the whole class. They can set up a Google Doc and type questions to us or, you know, just to stay in touch if they're having any issues with anything. Um, so that's nice. And then as far as like the players, you know, like I said, I, ha I have them sending me videos. I'm getting videos every day of different workouts and stuff, which I think is really cool. They're doing shooting, they're doing dribbling, they're doing weightlifting stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, it feels like it's, everything has slowed down, but you know, when you're 
just try to stay busy and stay after everything and and check in with the players, check in with students, check in with family. You know, it's it's how many of your how many of your kids that, that you're teaching, like what percentage of them are touching in base with you? I mean, I, I work with Penn Manor schools and I'm talking to teachers and and some teachers are saying, well, 50 percent. And then I talked to another uh, I talked to another school district, uh, Lord Alton, for example, they're grading. Like yeah. kids are getting graded. So how many about how many of your kids are 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 touching in and you know what is the participation like on this online learning stuff? Our our participation for my particular I have two sections basically is really good. It's almost all. Like one nice. or two that are not. Nice. And that's and that's more tech issues than unwillingness at this point. And we're trying to get the tech issues taken care of. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking at almost 100% participation in, you know, logging in and, and doing stuff. So it doesn't mean that they're doing every, everything, every little thing, because there's, you know, there's assignments for my class, there's assignments for ELA and special areas and things like that. But they're, they're participating at, in, at some, to some degree, you know, pretty much every day. So good. good. All right, Andy, I'll turn it back over to you. Or I just got a little message that we're, we're skidding down there in time. We got about 10 minutes left, so go ahead. Okay. I got a couple few more. Um, you already kind of touched on it with the, uh, with the Arkansas thing, and I'm going to parlay that into the way you guys kind of play Cacalico. Um, the last couple years, it's not really a secret that you guys <laughs> kind of muck it up and make it ugly because that's the way you guys have to play. That just – that's the way it suits you best to win. So my question is, if I were to give you all of the ingredients to make your perfect recipe, would you want to still play that way, kind of that defensive grind it out type style, or would you love to do like the fun and gun and shoot threes on every single trip and defense is an optional concept? Or <laughs> how would you like to play ball in a perfect world? Wow. <laughs> Defense will never be optional for Calico. <laughs> Andy, it's coach speak. I mean, what do you, what do you expect him to say? It's uh, like we want to average 85 points a game and give up 40. We want to be like those 1973 and 75 and 77 teams yep. at mm -hmm. Calico in 78. You know, they champs, 1977, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> – you, that's a really hard question to answer, but I do like the defensive grind it out. I, I, I like that. I, maybe I like it because that's who we are out of necessity sometimes. I mean, I don't have anything against our guys wanting to score in the 70s. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't try to hold them back from that if, if they want to go out and toss up 77 every night. Um, but it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I want to win. W is a w. And I think you have to adjust. You have to adjust to your personnel and what you can do. And this isn't college. We can't recruit guys. We have to play with who we have. And if there's a year where we have a bunch of six four guys that are really athletic and long, and we decide to press the entire game and push the ball and trap, and then that's what we'll do. But I I, I do like grinding it out defensively. I, I don't like giving up easy baskets. I mean, that, that probably is the thing that aggravates me more worse than anything else is, is an easy basket where we missed a rotation or just didn't even see a rotation. And yeah, where someone should have stepped in and taken a charge and they didn't like that's, that stuff irritates me really bad. Like missing a three, or missing a shot. Eh, that's going to happen. Like missed defensive assignments. And you would see in our practices. I mean, we, we focus on that a lot. So uh, that, yeah, I don't, I don't think that I would ever be a, a run and gun type of guy unless, you know, oh, our personnel God. dictated. Take that, that, nice that way. Oh. Take that Andy, way. Andy, Andy, Andy. I mean, look, Andy, it's like this. Either a coach is like, I want to score or <laughs> I want to like take charges and stuff like that. The guy over here, he's, he's like, I want to take charges. I mean, the nice thing is you guys got in, we got in early. And you guys get a get a preview tape up there at Cacalico. 
Well, me being the coach, I'm watching the kids in the back. I'm watching what, what the head coach is doing. And I'm yep. telling you, he was working on that press break that day. I know it. I mean, I, I was like, okay, here we go. He's press break, press break, press break, press break. I was just, I was like, okay. So that's what he's working on. That's He's getting ready for Ocarina right now. Yeah, that's this right. Practice of the year. That's right. <laughs> You always got to look ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> um, and I already kind of talked about this, too, but with you being in the, in the coaching field and nobody knows what the heck the future is going to look like, what, what do you think looks like in both aspects? There's really no wrong answer, but I have my own ideas. I'm just curious what you think this new normal everybody's talking about might look like in your eyes, whatever that may be. I, you, you cut out. I'm not, I missed the first part. The, the new normal, basically, that we're all talking about, like, it's probably not going to be, life isn't going to be exactly the way it was in February before we had this. And obviously, with schools going online and, you know, kids can't practice together and everything like that, whenever we get to some semblance of normal, what do you think that looks like for both the school and sports side of things? Well, for both, I hope it means as close to as what it was previously before this happened. I don't know. It's probably too early to say how realistic that is. Uh, it seems like, you know, this isn't going anywhere. And they're, you know, they're talking about if we loosen things up, then we could have a recurrence and, you know, get a spike in numbers again. And so who knows? But, I, man, I really hope for the kids' sake that we can go back to school and be in a classroom with their teachers and, and have that face-to-face -face interaction. And, you know, there's there's – kids that really really love going to school yeah. that that's the best part of their day going in and seeing their teachers and and just being there with their friends and having that structure that some of them don't have when school's not in session you know some kids the worst day is the day before Christmas break because they know they got two weeks where you know they're not going to have that structure and they're not going to have their friends and that normalcy and and I hope really hope that we can get back to that whether we do or not I don't know Hey, Coach, I, I got, we got, we got to wrap it up here. I got one more question for you. We're going to turn around here. How about you give some advice to the LL Hoops crew here? You know, ask them a question or give them some advice on what the heck we could do a little bit better on our end. Wow, okay. I mean, I think – Let him get his scroll out. Well, let, yeah, let me pull out my papers here. Scouting report. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, you guys do a really good job, first of all. And I think Andy seeing every team is remarkable. I think that's crazy. I think that's awesome. It's great for our league. And the coverage that we get in our league is just so good compared to other places. I mean, we, we can get information. We can watch videos. We hear you guys, Andy's breakdowns of games that he sees. And, and you know, Dell, you're doing the live streaming sometimes. And, and you guys are at games and you're putting stuff on Twitter. And, and it's, it's just so good. And I don't. I don't want to give you guys any advice for because, oh, okay. because I okay. think I think yeah. you guys are doing a really good job and I think you promote our league and our players and it's just it's just awesome. So I think oh, you guys yeah. are doing wonderfully and cool. I, I would not change it. Hey, hey, thanks. So one one thing we're gonna do this year, if we do live streaming this year, because I think getting money is gonna be like a royal pain in the butt this year. But we're probably coming, be a little tough to We're cheer. coming to your gym this year. Okay. You know, we're going to pick out a good game, and maybe it'll be you in Central or you in LS. You know, it's, it's got to be something good. So, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Sounds good. Keep You're the, always welcome. Keep the good good, uh, good work up, and I hope the Hogs do something someplace, someplace soon. I do, too. Really, really bad I do. You, you, and, Andy, you and Andy are struggling, man. <laughs> you got to – you got to – it's like you're not turncoats. I got to give you that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Andy. There you guys. We'll, we'll post yeah. this up a little later. Thank you. Good night. Good night.